Yo, what's good, everybody? So, obviously, no One Piece chapter this week, but that doesn't stop us from having a bunch of stuff to talk about. So, go ahead. I want you to hit that like button, subscribe, and you already know. Let's get straight into it. Yeah, so like I said before, One Piece chapter 1029 is coming out next week. But in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and get our predictions out the way. So as we know, Oda dropped a couple of nuggets on us last week. All right, we got the reveal of the cypher poles slash the world government probably coming to Wano. So we know that's going to happen. Uh, we know that they're going to invade Wano pretty much at all costs at this point, whether Kaido falls or not. And we also know that they're going after Nico Robin again. You know, Water 7 was a failed attempt and they're going to go ahead and try again. So I'm going to just come out and say it. I wouldn't be surprised if this is exactly where Oda picks up when we get to 1029. To me, it seems like every time we come off a break, Oda drops just, you know, not anything necessarily big, but drops something just to reward us for coming back from the break. And why not reward us by revealing more of the Marines plan or the world government's plan to come and invade Wano. He doesn't have to completely show his hand, but I don't know, maybe allude to an admiral or two coming or just who in the cypher poles are coming. Maybe even the inclusion of sword or something like that. It doesn't have to be anything major, but just one or two things here and there will definitely make the fan base go absolutely crazy so yeah i'll definitely looking forward to that and i would not be surprised if oda just kind of keeps that ball rolling we know that the pacing of wano is you know going 100 miles per hour right now oda is trying to get this information out and he's definitely you know he wants to keep that ball rolling so yeah definitely let me know below who you think is actually gonna show up who you think is gonna pull up in wano i've had a couple of discussions in the comment section the comment section is a great place if you want to reach out to me i've had a couple of discussions on instagram and social media as well but some people don't even think it's the marines showing up you know what i'm saying they think it's just like the cypher poles and it's because these aren't your typical marine galleons that you see in this panel here you know what i'm saying so it might just be the cypher poles i personally think that's a little weird for the the world government to just send the cypher poles not only that but cp0 is already there so it's like if they really wanted to just send cypher poles they're already there so why would they even mention that so personally i think there has to be some sort of government beside the the cypher poles that are coming to wano but let me know what you think down below i think it would maybe be the uh ssg and maybe a couple of vice admirals or maybe even an admiral hopefully oda you know gives us an idea or two in the next chapter so let me know what you think about that below and we know that this is really gonna push the straw hats to the absolute limit i said in my chapter review that at the end of every arc and at the end of every victory the straw hats usually have a huge party but it seems the marines are coming to crash this party we're not gonna have a party at the end of this and i don't think oda's ever written an arc where we have all the straw hats have a victory and then we go right into another battle that's never happened so you know wano is definitely pushing the straw hats to the limit and i can't wait to see just how they get out of this one Next up, of course, we have Momonosuke and his mission. You know, Luffy's put him in charge of somehow finding a way to stop Onigashima from crashing onto the flower capital. Um, obviously, him and Yamato came up with a plan to use his flame clouds in order to take over control of Onigashima from Kaido. Obviously, 
at this point in the story momo doesn't know how to do that he's just guessing but he is a dragon and he does have this power we we already saw it back in punk hazard when him and luffy had to get out of that hole so we know he can use the flame clouds he's never used them on this scale but it's really just a matter of momo's determination and we're sure he's gonna be able to get it personally i think that he's just gonna be able to safely land onigashima on the flower capital and we're gonna see some sort of uh, combination between the two of them like we're gonna see the flower capital mountain peak but we're also gonna get that skull from onigashima behind it and that will be like the new flower capital but momo will have you know led everybody to safety so i think that'll be cool as a matter of fact if you go ahead and give me a follow on instagram i'll probably draw like a concept version of that so yeah a uh, little shameless plug right there so so yeah, if you like art, uh, go ahead and follow me on Instagram at anime.shifu, of course. And of course, Yamato has a completely new mission, right? So she's left Momo to figure this out on his own. She has complete faith in him, just like Luffy does. And she's going to go find all the weapons and destroy the weapons. You know, she, she wants to go ahead and have another plan in her back pocket, just in case Momo brings us in for a rougher landing than what's planned she's gonna go ahead and get rid of all the weapons and the explosives and the gunpowder that kaido has stored on onigashima now i don't know about you and obviously yama doesn't know this but we've got the world government coming to invade in like you know i guess in their time it would be like a couple of maybe hours or so before the the world government lands on wano's shores and whether or not they're able to get in right away we know they're getting in you know what i'm saying i don't know how comfortable i am with yamato getting rid of all these weapons it seems like they're probably gonna need it you know what i'm saying of course we're gonna have luffy he's gonna be out of commission i'm sure law and kid killer everybody all our all our supernova team is gonna be out of commission sanji's gonna be out of commission i mean we might have brooke frankie jimbei you know and a couple of others a handful of others to be able to defend us from this world government the strongest person might be yamato actually to the for the straw hats defense so i don't know maybe she should hold on to some of these weapons instead of just getting rid of them i've heard theories of her just maybe tossing them off the side i don't think she's gonna do that because they're over wano at this point they're not over the flower capital but i don't think they're over land anymore so she's not just gonna be tossing them off the side so that's a good thing but i don't know maybe she should hold on to a couple maybe one or two because at this point you're gonna need something for those marine ships when they show up especially if they try like maybe like a buster call or something like that you're gonna need something to defend yourself and of course we're gonna continue our zoro and sanji battles respectively um if i were oda i would probably pick back up with sanji just because if we continue the uh trend of sanji finding the third strongest zoro finding the second um oda tends to finish sanji's fights before zoro's fights usually so we'll probably pick back up with sanji's fight we know that he has the exoskeleton that he developed in the last chapter and going forward that's a pretty big power boost and you know king's snapping swords on his neck he can't even cut sanji's neck with a giant sword so we already know that sanji's probably got this fight in the bag i mean he hasn't even used the raid suit yet and uh king's already freaking out so sanji essentially has this fight won as soon as he pulls out the raid suit uh he'll be able to disappear uh smash king in the face and we'll keep it going Zoro, on the other hand, has yet to really fully display his power up in his fight with King. Now, I know Enma is a power up. If you've been keeping up with the anime, he doesn't know it yet, but Zoro's been spamming Conqueror's Hockey left and right. So we know that his Conqueror's Hockey is a power up. Some people predict that in this fight, he'll be able to coat his attacks with conqueror's hockey 
I'm completely okay with that. I don't think it's necessary for him to be able to fight King and beat him, but I'm completely okay with him being able to at least utilize his conqueror's hockey at will by the end of this King fight. But I just have a hunch that we haven't actually seen Zoro's power up just yet. I don't think Zoro getting Conqueror's Hockey is gonna be a power up that Oda would put in the same category as Sanji's Raid Suit or Sanji unlocking his, you know, Germa 66 lineage powers. So I do think that there's something unseen from Zoro where definitely gonna get a new Santoryu move we know that for a fact um, whether it be Ashura or something on par with Ashura we've already seen him do use Ashura on Kaido but Oda cloaked it so obviously he didn't want us to see it yet so we might see it against King and I think that I just think that Zoro has yet to display his full power yet again during Wano and we're gonna see it I think Oda knows that I know he's kind of holding Zoro back and when you have a character like Zoro you can get kind of crazy so you don't want him to all of a sudden seem stronger than Luffy obviously so he's kind of held Zoro back since the new world and I feel like we're gonna get our full and proper display during his fight with King obviously King has all the durability of the ancient zones so Zoro is gonna have to come extra hard just to be able to beat him we know that King is also a Lunarian and we don't know anything about that we don't know what that means going into this fight is that make him extra powerful extra durable you know is he able to breathe in space like we don't know so I'm really really excited about this Zoro fight I love it when Oda does things like this you know we're heading into the unknown and yeah let me know what you think down below do you think that Zoro has more to show us or do you think that you know the conquerors hockey coding is Zoro's power up personally I'm looking at it from an end of story standpoint and I'm like if Zoro has to fight someone like Shiryu of the rain or Fujitora or the bald-headed Gorosei dude then you think that his end of story power up is really just gonna be oh yeah I got Enma and now I can use Conqueror's Hockey I don't think so I think that we're gonna have to see the seeds being sown for Zoro's new power up right now like it has to be akin to something like Gear 4th we saw Gear 4th in Dressrosa and we've seen Luffy get better and better with it up until this point it's still not perfect so that's how we know that we're gonna be perfecting gear forth by the end of the story but we're gonna have to see something from Zoro to put him on par with the likes of Shiryu and the likes of Fujitora so I'm really excited about that let me know in the comment section exactly what you think that will be and when do you think we'll see it I'm really interested in your answers. One thing that we didn't get in the last couple of chapters, but I know we're going to get before we get the conclusion of this battle is our old pals, Kid and Law versus Big Mom. I mean, we know Luffy has to take down a Yonko, but they have to take down a Yonko as well. These are going to be our, our new Yonko. So I'm interested to see if they're going to be able to take down Big Mom. I know a lot of people have theories that Big Mom is supposed to follow us all the way to Elbath. Well, if she follows us all the way to Elbath, that means Law and Kid, they lose here. So let me know what you think about that. I mean, we pretty much know the extent of Law's powers and of course he's gonna be able to give you know the both of them a huge advantage with his devil fruit usage so we already know what Law's about but Kid 
really needs a W. If we're going to start comparing him to Luffy in the future, if he's going to be a quote unquote rival pirate to Luffy, he's going to need to start catching some W's right now. And there's no better opportunity than to be able to get in some really good hits on Big Mom just to show us, yeah, he is on a Yonko level and we got to start treating him like that. So I'm really interested to see uh, the conclusion of that. Of course, we know there really hasn't been anybody in the story that's even made Big Mom really break a sweat. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm interested to see how Kid pulls out with that. Um, he got wrecked by Kaido already. Um, so, but he has law this time. So let me know what you think in the comments. I mean, Luffy's on the rooftop splitting the skies with Kaido out here. So kids got to show us something. All the kid fans, please, please let me know in the comment section. Where does kid get his W? Because at this point, I mean, it's really not looking good. And quickly, yeah, let me know what you think about the killer fight. I mean, killer needs a W as well. Um, so let me know what you think about that. Obviously, that brings us to our main event, which is Luffy versus Kaido. Obviously, we're not going to get that conclusion for a little while. You know, Luffy and Kaido's on the rooftop currently exchanging hands. You know, Luffy's probably giving him the business at this point. We don't really need to get into that right now because we're going to be talking about that for a, a, a while. But let me know what you guys think below. 1029 is a pretty highly anticipated chapter. I mean, Oda's been going crazy in these chapters. And, you know, I can't see him slowing down in 1029. So let me know what you think below. Obviously, hit me up on the socials. Hit me up in the comment section. Drop a like. Go ahead, subscribe. And I will catch you guys next time.